Glory to Jesus Christ. Today is the fifth Sunday after Danaha. As you can see, the fasting season is upon us. It is our time now to do the spring cleaning of our soul. And it's tomorrow we start the Nineveh fast. In a few weeks we start the Great Fast. And it's a time for us, I think, to think on why do we fast? Why does the church prescribe this, insist upon all Orthodox Christians to fast, to especially these two fasts that we have coming up, the three-day and the 50-day. And there may be many answers to that, to help us to have discipline, to help us to have self-control, and those are there. One simple answer that we can all think about is that Jesus was, showed us this way of fasting. We read in, today, in today's Gospel that after His baptism, that he spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness in fasting and prayer. And so he himself is showing us the way in spiritual life. We've, we are following him. And so the, then the question becomes, what happened after his fasting? Who came to see him when he finished his fast? Does anybody remember? Never. Satan. Right? Satan came to see him, and, and it says it quickly here that Satan came to see him, but I want to take a moment today to think on how Satan tried to tempt our Lord. There were three different temptations, if you remember. The first temptation was that after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, that Satan looked to the stones that were there and he said, Turn these stones into bread. Turn these stones into bread. Knowing that our Lord was hungry, He's telling him this. And then Jesus answered, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the second one is, He tells him, He takes him to a high pinnacle. And He tells Jesus, to jump down, jump off this high place and let the angels catch you. Let the world see your power. And then Jesus says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then G Satan takes Jesus and shows him on a, to a high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and says, if you bow down to me, I will give you all of this if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus says, Away with you, Satan, it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And I think we know about these three temptations, but I think it's important for us to understand what is behind each of those temptations that applies to us. What is Jesus conquering in each one of those temptations? There is a collection of writings called the Philokalia. In that, for so many centuries, there are different church fathers that write about the spiritual life. And one father, his name is Evagrius, writes about this and says, of the demons opposing us in the practice of our spiritual life, there are three groups who fight in the front line. In other words, there are three, three different types of demons that are working on three different areas against us. And he says, the first one, remember the first temptation is the stones into bread. And he says, the first one is the appetites of gluttony. There are demons that are attacking us to be gluttonous. To listen to our body over our soul. A simple example of this is food, right? We can think of this, you know, our body just says, looks to what we want and we have to be thinking of what is good for us and how much is good for us. If we listen just to our body, we will lead to gluttony. An example of this I can tell you, if we make a bunch of cookies, and if I have Ephraim without any control, I tell him there's some cookies, I can't expect that Ephraim's just going to take one cookie and eat that one cookie and stop and say that was enough. What I should expect and what has happened is that he will go there 
He will eat most of the cookies and he comes back with a chocolate face. You know, and, and that's one of the things. We don't see our gluttony oftentimes, right? We see other people's gluttony. It's hard to see our own gluttony. When I take an extra cookie, he says, no, Dada, diabetes. <laughs> but for himself, you know. And we're, you know, it's a little kid, but at the same time, we, we have the same problem. We see other people's gluttony. We struggle to see our own. And these are the things like food is one example. Lust is another. That can create a gluttony in us that we always want to satisfy. That if we don't have self-control, it can kill us. It can destroy us. It can consume us. Substance abuses are the same. They're addictive. Gluttony, gluttonous things are addictive. Food can be addictive. Sex can be addictive. Substance abuses can be, substances can be addictive. Even something simple, and I was thinking about this, that we may not even realize. We know those things are a little more. Our phones, our technology. Something that many of us didn't grow up with, that now, we are cre- those are addictive things. If you don't believe me, next time, try to do this. Next time, get a text alert that you received a message. See how long you can go without looking at your phone. You hear the little ding, and see how long, you, you'll have to fight yourself to do it. Because you're an instant, you're, you're, I have to see, I have to look, I have to see. And sometimes you notice this, like, we look at our phone, then we look at our phone again, we look again, oh, maybe somebody, oh, maybe some update on WhatsApp, maybe something on social media, something. It's very addictive, and the scientists have shown the same chemical pathways that work in alcohol and all of those with the dopamine. It's the same chemical pathways with technology. We should treat our, the technology in our lives as an addictive substance that needs control. Not just for the kids, not just for teenagers, for everybody. We should just be aware of it, right? But these are the different types. And when Jesus is being tempted, stones into bread, this is the type of gluttony that we should be aware of in our life. Number two, the second temptation was, Jesus is taken to the pinnacle, he falls down, or he's told, jump down and the angels will pick you up. What is the, the struggle there? What is the, the passion of sin that is being targeted by Satan? Pride. Gluttony, pride was the second one. For Jesus, instead of being humble, which is who God is. This is the reason that God came as man in Bethlehem in a manger, not in a palace. There's a reason why he died a humble death on the cross. He's showing us the way that God is, a way of humility. And Satan is trying to make him do the opposite of that, to be prideful and to show off his power. If you notice, even with the miracles that he did when he healed people, he would even tell them, don't tell anybody about this. Go and, go and tell no one, but go your way. He wasn't looking for that kind of fame. And so he, Satan is trying to tempt him to be prideful. And in the same way, and we all know this is something that Satan works in us. The little bit of pride that we may have, he will work in us. You know, a lot of times when we think of pride, we think, oh, I'm, pridefulness means I'm better than everybody, or I'm the best. And we may say, I don't think I'm better than anybody else, you know. But there's another way that pride is shown in our life. Church fathers say this, if you get offended, if you get offended when someone says something bad in you, about you, if you get offended and angry, there's pride in our hearts. Because there's pride that we're working that I don't deserve this. I'm not that bad. That person has no right. And then when we especially so uh, wait for apologies, wait for people to ask for our forgiveness. These are symbols, signs of pride. And God uses that to split us. Split families, split brothers and sisters, split church communities, split co-workers, all of that. Split friends. Happens. 
And so look at the pride in our life. It may not always be that I'm better than everybody else. It might be I feel like I deserve something from somebody else. Or that I've been wronged by somebody. The third one was, Satan shows the kingdoms of this world and says, bow down to me and I will give you all of this. And this is pointing towards greed. Always wanting everything in this world. Being attached to this world. The temptation was for Jesus to say, I am the king and you should know it. And this is my kingdom. Jesus is making very clear, this is not my kingdom. This is not my kingdom. My kingdom is coming. Don't expect that I'm going to be reigning as a king in this kingdom, in this world. No. My kingdom is coming. As a matter of fact, St. Paul, if you listen to the reading here in 2 Corinthians, he has an interesting line that he says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he says, Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who is the God of this age? Satan. He's saying that Satan is the God of this age. And if you really open your eyes and look and see the culture and see the the society and just look around you, you can see Satan is the God of this age. That everybody is doing the will of Satan, whether they understand it or not, that's what's happening. The righteousness of God is not what is popular in the world today. You can see it. You know, when I talk about gluttony, when I talk about all the food and uh, substances and sex and all of those things, when we talk about greed and material things, these are the things we, we praise in this society. When we talk about pride, these are the things we praise in this society. We, we, we put that on a pedestal. Naturally, that's where in our fallenness, that's where humanity is going. Only if we struggle in fasting against and, and, and prayer, and we struggle against Satan, will we be able to rid ourselves of this. And so when we talk about why do we fast, as we have this Nineveh fast starting tomorrow, we should understand it is a battle. That Satan is working on each and every one of us. That in some level, we have some greed in us. We have some gluttony in us. We have some pride in us. If we are blind to that, then our spiritual, our, our soul is in trouble. But if what I hope we do, and we understand during this fast is, there are things that I need to overcome. And if me against the devil without prayer and fasting, I will lose. I will lose. I'm no match for him. But with prayer and fasting, with trust in the Lord, I can overcome. This is what the saints have shown us. We are not alone in it. And so this is something, if you look at these two fasts, Nineveh and the Great Fast, they are having a special emphasis on repentance, more so than the others. You'll notice that the fastings are more strict. We are to not eat any animal products during these fasts, any animal products during these fasts. We are to do 40 prostrations every day. Remember I told you about this, fasting, prostrations, going to the church. That is what we should be doing more of during the fast, that we do these 40 prostrations to continually humble ourselves, to detach ourselves, and to control ourselves. To control ourselves from gluttony, to detach ourselves from greed, and to humble ourselves from pride. These are the things that we attack. If we look at the temptations of Jesus, we see where the devils are attacking each and every one of us, where the demons are striking Do a spiritual evaluation as you get into this fast. Don't just go through motions, but look through our hearts and see where is the gluttony in my life? Where is the pride in my life? Where is the greed in my life? We can always do better. We we may have been better than where we were before, but we can always do better. Let us strive for this. May all glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen.